Um, we get trained. This is an inside scoop. Y'all need people need to know if you don't know this about conventional doctors. We get trained in matching game. We're matching your symptoms to a label. Once we match that, game over. It's done because there's a pharmaceutical that goes to every label. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Garden Life Podcast. We are the, the Duffin Dags. So we're on a journey of discovering what it means to live whole spirit soul and body so listen along watch us and enjoy the journey all right welcome everybody to another episode of garden life we are super excited for this episode we have a special guest which i'll let vicky intro in just a minute okay <laughs> very excited um but before we jump into uh, introducing our guests, we want to just give a little recap of Garden Life, what it is we believe, why we even started doing this podcast yeah. in the first place. Um, really, it goes back to the garden in Genesis, Adam and Eve in the garden. This was a representation of what God intended for humanity. We know and believe that Adam and Eve in the garden, they had access to their creator. They were able to walk with him. They were able to talk with him. They were able to be in his presence. And in that, there was no sickness, no disease, no anxiety, depression, pain. It was perfect unity, perfect peace. Um, so the question that we have that we started doing these episodes of discovering different things is, is it possible in today's modern world with all these systems that man's put in place, is it possible to get back to that place? Yeah. Is it possible to get back to a place of complete wholeness, spirit, soul, and body? So that's our heart for this podcast, these shows, is just to talk about different topics of how can we get away from the modern hustle, bustle, um, the different things people have come in with food, preservatives that are poisoning us, making us sick, all of these things, what can we do proactively to live a life of wholeness when it seems like everything in this modern world is against us? Yeah. So. Amen. <laughs> okay, well, I'm too excited. <laughs> we have a legend in the room today. I don't know about that. She's talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny. She's um not. Yeah, the last few months, I keep coming home and saying to Blake, all the stuff I'm learning from Dr. Ben, I'm like, look, the people who influence my life have changed a little bit. We have God, we have Dr. Ben, and then we have Blake. Okay. <laughs> Just pull the Not preference. Right off of my we have to have a counseling session. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> the influence in my life. Yeah, you fair didn't even enough. know what chia seeds were. <laughs> few That's weeks, not two, <laughs> two weeks ago. That's not true. Um, but we have uh, a legend in the room, a friend, um, Dr. Ben Edwards. Um, an incredible holistic doctor in town. Um, we have learned everything from him. I think I was plant-based for five years, sat down with Dr. Ben for two minutes, and I was converted <laughs> back to <laughs> eating eggs <laughs> um, and clean meat and all of the things. So um, he really does have a big influence in our life. Yeah. We love him dearly, um, him and his sister, Dr. Emily as well. So... Thank you for being here with Thanks us today. Out. Hey, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah. I don't know about the legend thing, but <laughs> maybe infamous, but well Thank just you. just a little backstory for the listeners. If you've heard most of our episodes where we talk about health, nutrition, hydration, all those things, we learn from Dr. Ben, his practice, his podcast, You're the Cure, um, Veritas, his website. So all of his videos, YouTube, we just consumed it all. But it got to the point where we were like, we really want to create a podcast to start talking about this. Um, but we learned most of it from Dr. Ben. So we <laughs> should probably talk to him and say, are you okay with us kind of copying what we're learning from you? And so he graciously let us have a meeting. And of course his response was, Hey, there's no trademark on truth. Um, go after it, whatever I can do to help even graciously coming on the show today. So yeah, we're very happy to have you. Um, so for the listeners, if you want to start with just kind of telling your backstory, how you got into integrative medicine and where that all started. Yeah. So, I mean, just starting with that word holistic and integrative, um, you know, I didn't even know what those words were. I didn't know anything about alternative medicine. 
I, I was straight and narrow. Um, both my granddads were medical doctors. My great-great-granddad was a medical doctor, two uncles, lots of nurses in the family. <clears throat> so I grew up totally conventional um, in a little town in Central Texas. But my granddads, I saw them impacting the, the community greatly yeah. and just pillars in the community, you know, just these great men really helping people. So I thought, man, that's awesome. I want to help people like that. And so me growing up, a doctor did it all. They delivered babies, they did surgeries. I mean, these were old school doctors that did everything. And um, so that's what I went to school to do. UT Houston Medical School, graduated from there in 2002. Then did uh, family practice residency training in Waco, got out of there in 05, and went to a little tiny town out in West Texas. My wife, Jamie, and I, and at the time had one kiddo. And so well, there we were, living our dream, my dream, um, small town country doctor. And it was great in a lot of ways. <laughs> um, so great, mostly from the standpoint of what I thought fulfilled me was being a small town, be the, the so I was the only doctor in the whole county. Mm. So what, when you say small town, what does that mean? Like About what population? 2,500 people in the town. Wow. And probably another 2,500 in the county. Wow, okay. And this is a that town is where <laughs> Friday nights it shuts down for the football games, just like in the movies that people have seen. That's it, yeah. <laughs> that classic small town. <laughs> yeah. There's pros and cons of that, but yeah. I had that nostalgic kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so it was great. We were there. Uh, I mean, I had a great team there, a, a good, two good nurses, great office manager, great support from the community. And so the clinic became very successful, which was the goal of the county. That, that clinic had lost money for 10 years, okay. and the taxpayers were, were making up the difference. But they wanted to be out of debt, self-sufficient. Taxpayers wanted to be off the hook. Um, so they challenged me to, to do that, and so we did. We got very successful financially, and you do that with volume. You got it in the American healthcare system where these government payers, uh, Medicare, Medicaid, yeah. the reimbursement rates are pretty small, low, so you got to do volume to make up for that. So I'd see 40 to 50 patients a day. And then we do house calls on the evening and weekends. I took care of the local nursing home. I took care of the local county jail, the inmates in the jail. The juvenile detention center, um, so the kids that were in jail. Wow. Um, and it was a pretty full-time gig, Friday night football games, team doctor. And, but, you know, that was great. I was loving it yeah. for the most part. Um, busy, but successful. Yeah. So every month we go to the meeting, the county health district uh, board meeting, and they put out the financials, and we're knocking it out of the park. Um, so we're in the top 95th percentile of all clinics in America Jeez. on on the financial part. Yeah. So so the number of visits, the number of procedures, the just all the volume stuff. With 2,500 people. Yeah. Well, the surrounding counties didn't have a doctor either. Yeah. So very low um, healthcare provider population out in this part of Texas. So they were coming from you know hour two hours away. Oh really? Wow. Um, and I mean, they were sick, so it was a lot of repeat customers. Sure. And that's the thing about the healthcare system I learned later, they don't get anybody well. It's repeat business. <laughs> and actually in that model, at least how I, you know, that was good because we needed volume. Yeah. So we're cruising right along, top one of the top clinics in America financially, the Washington Post newspaper from Washington, D.C. Somehow, I don't remember exactly how they've heard about us. But basically, they asked if they come follow us around for a week and how to be successful with the Medicare, Medicaid population. And so we're on the front page. They put us a picture of me doing a house call on the front page of the Washington Post. So now we're famous. We have money. The clinic's paid for. They built a brand new clinic, million dollar clinic, paid for it, paid it off in a year. So like we're cruising, yeah. doing great. By this time, I think we had four kids. So life's good for the most part pretty good and then divine appointment happened i mean one thing i would i will say is i was getting a little bit not burnout but kind of like something was off in my spirit like man these people they're sick mm -hmm. and so i'd write the prescription to get their blood blood sugar down and it would get down but in a year or two they'd be back because it was up they're still taking their medicine so i'd have to give them a higher dose 
and eventually a second blood pressure, blood sugar, mm. reflux, everything. It was all the same, asthma. So I was given the right medicine, and it would work temporarily, but then they need more. And so, I mean, people are just sick, so it kind of starts to weigh on you a little bit and burden you, and, and you're busy, and it's so almost burnout thing. Um, but anyways, divine appointment happens. My nurse practitioner at the time, who had celiac disease, which is autoimmune disease of your intestines, or if you eat gluten, it triggers your immune system to attack your intestines and has lots of GI symptoms, pain, bloody stool, all kinds of stuff. So he had that, so he avoided gluten. That's the answer when you have celiac. So the nurse prac one weekend went on a, a little getaway weekend with his wife <clears throat> to a bed and breakfast out of town, up in Amarillo, north of here. And told the lady at the bed and breakfast, hey, I need a gluten-free pancake because I have celiac. And she said, we can do that for you, but you could get that cured if you want. <laughs> There's a doctor here that can cure that. And my nurse prac said, you're crazy. You don't cure celiac. But anyways, the doctor was right there in the bed and breakfast. So d more to be polite because the lady kept pestering my <laughs> nurse prac. He met with this guy, with the doctor. Mm. And after about four hours... <laughs> Uh, he had him convinced, he, the doctor convinced my nurse Prack to do a few things with his diet and his lifestyle, a few supplements. And anyways, my nurse Prack decided to do these things. He was convinced based off what this guy said. And he went and implemented these things over many weeks and months. I didn't know this was going on, but eventually the nurse Prack comes to me and says, Hey doc, I'm cured of celiac. Wow. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> you crazy kid, get back to work. <laughs> um, and like, I kind of made fun of him. Yeah. So he kind of got mad at me. He's like, you don't believe me? I'm serious. I, and I had noticed this guy, he had trimmed up. He wasn't way overweight, but you know, 10 pounds pudgy. He trimmed up. His complexion was better. His mood was better. Um, he told me his cycling, he was a cyclist, and his personal times, he was beating his best personal times. So he was just in more fit and wow. shape. Everything's better. Yeah. And, but he said, my celiac is better too. And I just didn't believe it. <clears throat> so he went immediately to the break room in the clinic where a drug rep had brought some uh, breakfast burritos with tortillas, which have wheat, gluten. He ate one. Prove it. <laughs> I'm like, hmm, let's see how long this lasts. Well, then he goes at lunch and gets a hamburger and eats it with the bun, gluten. Then he had a cookie that a drug rep brought that afternoon. So three gluten exposures in one day normally would have sent him into a tailspin. He would have been sick for a few days. Well, he didn't get sick. He came back to work the next day. So, I mean, I got curious. And that's one thing. I have a curious mind, I guess. Um, so I thought, man, this is weird. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, well, maybe it's just a miracle cure. God still does miracles, maybe, I think. At that time, I didn't want sure about that even, but, you know, enough to think it could have. Yeah. Um, and then I thought, well, maybe it's just like a temporary, you know, there's no way this is going to last. It's a delayed reaction. You know, kept thinking of excuses. But eventually I got to, no, this is true. He's good. Wow. He's totally good. He flew back to Italy, actually. His grandma lives in Italy. And he told me, I'm going to fly to Italy. I'm going to see grandma and I'm going to eat all her pasta. And I said, you're crazy, because if this thing flares up, you'll be in that little tiny bathroom on the airplane for, oh, you know, 15 yeah. hours home or whatever it is. Yeah. He came, flew, came back. He was fine. Wow. So anyways, I called a doctor up there in Amarillo. I'm like, man, because what hit me was I'm going to have another celiac patient. Yeah. They're going to come in and they're going to ask me what to do. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, I'm going to have to make a decision. Yeah. Am I just going to give you the one answer? Eat gluten free. That's what I learned in medical school. Or am I going to give them an option? Mm. Gluten-free or talk to Shane, my nurse prac. I don't know what he did. It, only, it worked for him. Maybe it won't work for you. Maybe it will. I don't know idea even anything about it. But hey, yeah. it's your choice. Yeah. So I felt obligated to give him the choice. Of course, then I thought, well, then I need to know what this guy's talking about. The doctor, Roby Mitchell's his name, Dr. Fit. He's since passed away. So I called Roby, and I'm just kind of grilling him a little bit on the phone, like, who are you, and what are you doing, and what is this, and all this holistic hocus-pocus stuff. And, you know, he would say stuff like, 
if you weren't born with it, you don't need to keep it. Wow. And um, there are no diseases. They're all consequences. And just other kind of crazy stuff. In my intellectual mind, I thought yeah. crazy. And in my spirit, I'm like, no, that this guy's right. Wow. But then my intellect kicks in and takes over my spirit, man. And, I'm, and the intellect is in charge yeah. <laughs> back then. Um, but it was enough curiosity. I kept calling them back like, okay. And I, but I'd be drilling them with, well, yeah, what about this? And what about this? And what about this? And that can't be. None of this can be. Or they would have taught me back in school. I mean, those yeah. professors in school, right. they're not evil. They're not the devil. They're nice guys and gals. And, you know, so this just can't be. Like you got the, you're the only one in the whole world who knows this. Why don't, yeah, you know, why yeah, isn't this on the news, the uh, nightly yeah. news? Yeah. I just couldn't. That's when I was naive. I didn't really understand the truth that's in the Word, you know, this world and the ruler of the prince of, of the air, but we can get into that later. So anyways, this one day I called them because I'm kind of believing them. Like, I want to learn this, yeah. but I am busy. I mean, I'm seeing 40 or 50 a day. Yeah. I have no time. I've got kids at home. I am busy. I get home. I'm a dad. I'm a husband. I'm tired. Hey, Roby. Can't you just send me one book that kind of just summarizes all this alternative medicine? And that word alternative, it set him off. <laughs> he like yelled at me in the phone. Alternative? And then he just went off. He was like, all right there, smarty pants. You're so busy and famous down there at Garza County Health Clinic. You're, you're rocking and rolling on the front page of Washington Post. So you're so busy, what if you got to build an addition to your clinic to expand? Are you going to call the engineer or the alternative engineer to design that addition to your clinic? Next time you get on an airplane to fly to a medical conference, you're going to get on a, you're going to go with the aviation guys or the alternative aviation. Next time your car is making a noise, are you going to go with the mechanic or the alternative mechanic? Right. <laughs> so, I mean, now he just, I'm like, dang. And he said, Ben, you have to understand there's a design to all this. Mm -hmm. All mechanics understand the law of internal combustion. Those engines all run by that same, under that same law. There's no way around it. The law of aerodynamics, lift and thrust and all this. You get, if you're a pilot, that's what it is. You can't get around it. Mm -hmm. If you jump off a building, you know, things kick in that take you to the ground. There's just these forces that were put in place. And he said it's the same in the body. It's designed, there's an operational design to it. And if you steward it, if you understand it, you know what to give it, you know what to not give it, it'll function. Mm. So go be a good doctor and figure out <laughs> what the body needs that it doesn't have mm. or what's in there that shouldn't be in there. Yeah. It's that simple. Be a detective and the body will fix itself. In that point, I said, okay. No, he said, why, why don't we quit debating? Because it had been about a year. Um, why don't we quit debating? You send me your 10 sickest patients, the ones that you can't get better, nobody else can get better, you've referred them to all the specialists. They've gone to all the big, you know, been to Dallas, been to the big medical centers, been to Mayo Clinic, wherever, doesn't matter. And it, Roby was a little cocky, <laughs> and part of me is a little competitive, yeah. and I used to like to be right. I'm like, okay, big shot, you're on. Yeah. Because yeah. I had some tough patients, and they'd been to all the specialists, and I sent them these 10 sickest patients, and they all came back well. Gosh. Jeez. Not like overnight. Yeah. Um, How did they feel going to him? Well, they were so desperate, they were absolutely okay. ready to. Yeah. And that's unfortunately where we've gotten with treat a symptom only. Uh, medicine, which is what normal conventional Western medicine is now, um, these patients get so desperate, okay. they will do almost anything. Right. And that was the case with these guys. So one lady had what's called urticaria, that's like a hive, a real itchy rash all over her body. Horrible. It, it's severe urticaria. She'd been to multiple dermatologists, allergists, internal medicine doctor. This has been going on for years. And so she was absolutely ready to go anywhere. And so she went. And then I had a diabetic old guy, 74 years old, 
been diabetic for many years. He'd been my patient for seven years. I'd written the prescriptions for most of the medicines he was on. He was on nine different medicines. Three or four of those were, were diabetic medicines, a couple blood pressure medicines, cholesterol, arthritis, heartburn. Anyways, his blood sugar was still high, even with all the medicine. So I told him it's time for insulin shots, and he refused. 74 years old, he said, I'd rather die. I'm not giving myself a shot. I don't care what you say. Mm. I said, well, you're going, you are going to die. You're going to have a stroke, heart attack. Your kidneys are going to fail. I mean, you, you, you got to do this insulin. Mm. And he just said, no. And I said, okay. And then I said, well, I just met this doctor. He's kind of crazy, maybe a quack, I don't know. But he doesn't believe in diseases. And so he don't believe in diabetes. You want to go see him? Wow. And that old man said, I sure do. And he went, and he was one of those that came back. He was off all nine of those medicines, except for a half of one blood pressure pill. Unbelievable. And his blood sugar is normal. Off his meds. Just by diet and lifestyle is yeah. what he teaches him basically a few supplements so when those 10 came back well that was it Sheesh. i'm like i'm in let's go i mean i don't care what my intellect says yeah. this is a truth yeah. these are my patients uh, seven years this one lady lupus it ruined her life just about she's almost going to get a divorce she lost her job because she couldn't function her joint pain a skin rash depression mood just horrible her life was just and I mean, I went to church with this lady. She's about my age, and, and she was one of the ten. She got all better. Gosh. And when you see that kind of transformation, it's like, that's a no-brainer. Yeah. So I, you know, I guess there was enough in me to, because, of course, in my mind, I'm thinking, what do, what do people think? What do my granddads think? You right. know, the doctors. Mm -hmm. What do this town think? They're all dependent on me. I thought it was up to me. Um, what are my family, colleagues, my paycheck? I mean, all the normal, all that was there. So I tried to ride the fence at that clinic. <laughs> I started scheming. All right, God, I hear you. This is a truth. Yeah. But these people need it too, so I can do both. And I tried to make that work. And um, But the problem with this, it's not a problem, but in that model, 40 to 50 patients a day, you can't do true medicine. You can't truly get someone well because you need one to two hours. Mm. And that was a, the kicker that it's incompatible. And I tried to make it compatible and it wasn't, so they fired me. So I got my first firing letter ever. Never even got the tension slip all growing up in school. Get fired. <laughs> For helping people in all things. <laughs> But it was so awesome. I mean, it's weird because I, I used to be such a people pleaser, man pleaser, cared about what people thought about me. And I walk in, I'm getting fired. I'm like, just, it's this unreal experience. It's on a Friday afternoon. He said, be out by Monday morning. I called Jamie. And how many years had you been in that town? Seven. Wow. And took them from $10,000 a month deficit to a million dollars in their savings account. Clinic paid off. I mean, they were rocking it. Not just me. It was a good team, like I said. Yeah. And that's just a system. I knew how to run, work that system. They trained me how to work that system. But yeah, it's like that quick. When I told those guys, look, here's what I'm learning. People get well. And I just can't deny it. Yeah. I said, I'll, I'll tell you what, I won't, like, I'm not going to get on the street corner and preach it. I'm not going to put a billboard up. I'm not going to even talk about this. I'm not going to market or advertise it. But if I'm in a room with the patient for a five-minute visit and I give them the option, like for reflux, you want to cure this reflux or you want to manage it with Nexium, and they say cure, I'm going to tell them, okay, make a follow-up, but do it for an hour. And I told my staff, do it. Give them an hour appointment slot. And so I told the board, listen, if enough people ask, Potentially, I'm going to get down to seven or eight people yeah. a day instead of 50, and the money's going to go in the tank. So I, I told them that, and people started coming. This one lady, this is a story you mentioned off air. <laughs> this little old lady in Garza County back then, um, and this was before I knew the truth, but look, then God brought this to my mind later. Like, that's what she was talking about, Ben. So this, this was a Friday afternoon before I learned the truth, 
I'd seen a full day, I mean, 50 patients, whatever. I'm kind of tired, end of the day, end of the week. I'm trying to get to the Friday night football game. Got to get home, change, get the kids, eat dinner, get to the game. Well, this lady walks in, uh, a walk-in, no appointment. She's elderly, and she's having chest pain. And that's like, oh, great. I mean, so self-centered on my part. <laughs> you had to have a heart attack <laughs> on Friday afternoon. <laughs> Just busy. Couldn't she come earlier today or Thursday or wait till Monday or Friday afternoon at four o'clock? Uh, um, but being the highly trained medical doctor I am, uh, um, we get trained. This is an inside scoop. Y'all need people need to know if you don't know this about conventional doctors. We get trained in matching game. We're matching your symptoms to a label. Mm -hmm. Once we match that, game over, it's done. Because there's a pharmaceutical that goes to every label. I'll give you an example, and this lady's a great example. She walks in with a complaint of chest pain. So real quick in your mind, you're thinking, okay, there's only a handful of things, not even a handful, that can cause chest pain. So you ask a few questions to delineate that out. So I said, ma'am, tell me about this pain. Is it like a heaviness, like an elephant sitting on your chest, a pressure heaviness? kind of more on the left side, maybe radiates to your left arm and your left jaw. Worse when you get up and walk or if you're going up steps or carrying groceries or exerting yourself, get a little sweaty with it, maybe a little nauseated with it, and it goes away when you sit down and rest, that kind of chest pain? Or is it more like in the center of your chest, more of a burning, like a fire? Worse when you lay down at night, worse when you eat spicy food, feels a little better if you drink some milk or something, take a Tums. Or is it more when you twist and take a deep breath, like a sharp pain, and maybe you fell recently or working out? I mean, there's you see where I'm going with this. So the first one, that's angina. That's from your heart not getting enough oxygen. Could be a heart attack going about to happen. This one's acid reflux, and the other one's you pulled a muscle or hurt your rib or whatever. I mean, basically, that's it. So anyways, you can ask that in two minutes. I asked her that. She said, oh, the second one, the burning. So, I mean, we ran an EKG just to be safe. So what I'm saying is we can ask questions, draw some blood, run, do some tests to categorize that symptom. Wow. Yeah. Because once you categorize it with the label, acid reflux, there's a prescription, boom, done. I mean, if it were this first one, angina, all right, call the paramedics, get up to love it, you know, check your heart, do all the things at the hospital. But even then, put a stent or put you on meds. Heart disease, there's a root cause to heart disease. We don't get to it. But back to the lady. It was reflux. So I'm like, Phew, all right, acid reflux, no problem. I mean, this took two seconds almost. I'm writing a prescription for Nexium, hand it to her. She looks at it and she said, Doc, you're just treating my symptom. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm sure the audience totally gets that. Y'all get that, but a doctor? Mm -hmm. I didn't know what she was talking about. Yeah. And she's like, my, you're just treating my symptoms. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm treating your disease, GERD. Gastroesophageal reflux disease, G-E-R-D. GERD, D's for disease, it's your disease. <laughs> and here Here's you go. Sure. And she's like, no, no, you're just treating my symptoms. And she was elderly and she liked to do natural things and herbs and stuff. I, I knew that about her. Um, and so then I tried to scare her into it. I'm like, ma'am, I'm sorry, but this is acid in your esophagus. And if you don't treat this with this prescription, you could get esophageal cancer because acid in the esophagus over and over and over and over, it could do that. And that's true. Uh, but it was fear-based and she didn't go for it. So then I was like, well, I tried to go Adam and Eve, you know, went religious. Hey, sin came into the earth. Like you mentioned the garden, everything's perfect. Now things aren't perfect. Fallen world. You know, sorry, yeah, this is a consequence of that. Luckily for you, God made doctors. <laughs> about me. Brains. Yeah, I'm highly trained. There's pharmaceuticals, these great scientists in the lab that develop these drugs so you can feel better. And she was like, no, I'm not buying it. I'm like, okay, can't scare you into it. Jeez. Can't religion you into it. Um, so I just said, I'm sorry, ma'am, you only have two options. Suffer. Or take the medicine. Jeez. And I put that, put it in her purse, put the prescription in her purse and said, I can't make you go fill it, but that's your only two options. And I left. Wow. 
But what she was meaning was, and getting at was, there's option three. Fix it. I didn't know there was an option three. Doctors aren't trained in option three, um, but there is option three. Apple cider vinegar. Oh, Apple cider vinegar, oh, betaine, get off the processed food. High sugar diet shuts down your stomach acid pumps. It's actually a lack of stomach acid. Our, our God-given normal pH in our stomach should be a one. One to two. Battery acid's 1.5. You can't get more acidic than a one. And that's the design. And when you're that acidic, it triggers a signal for this valve in between your food pipe and your stomach. That valve will squeeze shut and keep all that acid here. When your pH rises to a three or four, this valve opens up. Wow. And three or four is still acidic, so it's going to hurt. So you actually need more stomach acid, not less, when you have heartburn. It's crazy. But apple cider vinegar can help. Betaine can help. Um, but just getting on real food, hydrating well, minerals. you got to have minerals to run these pumps that pump acid. Processed food shuts it down. High, definitely sugar, high sugar shuts it down. Lack of minerals, which is modern processed food. Um, so you don't necessarily have to do the supplements. But initially, we usually do for the first month or two while they're getting their diet lined out, getting on real food. But it's kind of a long story there. Sorry. That's great. So with that, I kind of want to get into, so you had that experience, you're actually starting to see patients get well with, well, starting to realize that you're, you've only been treating the symptom. I think I've heard you say before on a podcast, um, that you, at the time you had one tool in your tool, in your tool belt, and that was your prescription pad. Hmm. And then now that you've kind of learned these things, which I want to get into now, because in the modern world today, like you talked about that lady that her marriage was falling apart. She was depressed, losing her job. All of these things is the truth is sickness is so loud. Like symptoms are not silent. Yeah. So when we have them, it's like, what can we do to quiet this thing? Yeah. That's our mentality. Um, and so we go to a doctor, we try to get it fixed. They give us a pill or whatever, which is part of the problem is, us as a consumer too, not just the doctor, we're looking for a quick fix. Mm -hmm. Give me a powder, give me a pill, um, give me a quick regimen that I can do that this will just stop so that I can get on with my life. But the issue is we're just treating it then and there. It might give some relief for a week, a month, maybe a year, but then you're going to come right back to it because you never dealt with, you never uprooted it. So what is your now, this has been... 12 years since this has happened. What's your philosophy now of how do you, when someone walks in the door, how do you actually get to the root issue? Because if we're experiencing a stomach ache or acid reflux, it's like, it's something I ate or it's just like, you can fix it just by giving me something to combat it. But what you're saying is no, there's something typically deeper. So maybe just talk about that of your philosophy now and how you work with patients. Yeah. So I'm um, actually it's getting more and more basic, more and more simple. Mm -hmm. It's not really complicated. I just told my last patient, new patient, that I kind of feel guilty taking your money. <laughs> Be her and her husband both, two separate symptoms and diseases, labels, exact same root cause. Mm -hmm. And it almost always is. They're basic things that get out of order. And it, I use the analogy of a vehicle, uh, like a car. You know, get a sports car that's highly engineered, high performing. It will run. It will do what it's designed to do, but it needs certain inputs. And if you'll give it those inputs and you just turn the key on, go. Yeah. It's the same with the body. It needs certain inputs. So initially, um, I really felt like near day one, I felt in my spirit, just teach the basics. Nutrition, hydration, movement, and peace. Mm -hmm. The four pillars. Yeah. That was way early. But as a young integrative doctor, you get really drawn into going on to all these cool conferences. There are some really cool things in the integrative world. Mm -hmm. um, gadgets, I call them. Different supplements, different you know, saunas and ozone and UV light blood irradiation. I mean, there's some cool things you can do in the natural realm. I call it to micromanage. You get in there and tinker and try to be a mechanic and let's, I hear all your symptoms, okay, 
there is a root cause, but let me get in there and try to speed this thing up. And I do want to say for the listeners in particular, if you're symptom management right now, if you're on a medicine, you know, it's all right. It's not about condemning that. Yes. And even if you're on a green version, and that's what we got to be careful, that's a counterfeit. We can switch out pharmaceuticals for nutraceuticals. Yeah. There's a pill for high blood sugar, pharmaceutical or natural. But that pill's not fixing, neither one of those is fixing why is that sugar actually elevated. Mm. But that's across the board. You can do that for asthma. You can do that for high blood pressure. You can do it for everything. So I dabbled in that some. That four-pillar thing was always there. But then I go off on a little tangent. Hey, if we could do this, that would help them out and speed the process up or help them feel better sooner, and which was all true. So we did a lot of that, actually. And we still can, but it's flipped now. Where Because what we learned was a patient naturally, just like you said, I'm human too. I would look for it too. Give me the easy button answer, especially yeah. if you're really hurting or you're really symptomatic. Mm -hmm. Of course. And that with compassion, you want people to feel better. Sure. So if I have the ability to order a cool IV or supplement or do something, you know, it's hard to not do that. But we don't do that now without fully engaging the truth so they can know, be fully informed. You can do this if you want. But what we found was people would latch onto that, focus on that, spend all their time, money, energy, and effort on that. And oh yeah, the four pillars, yeah, I hear that, and mm -hmm. I'll do the best I can. Yeah. So they're just sitting over here being kind of a B, C student or so, like A, B, C, D, and they're like F, B, B minus, C plus, whatever. That was Vicky in school. It's on you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, we're going to have to do a little count. <laughs> but so it's human nature. Doctor, you fix me. Yeah. Give me something, mm -hmm. supplements and all these things. So anyways, we've kind of come through that because patients would get better for a week, a month, a year, but they'd come back. Yeah. And that's not what I want. It's not really what they want. You know, we need to be made whole, set free, go away. You don't need a doctor. Yeah. That's how the design is. If you stirred, you know, that original thought or question at the top of the show about can we get back to God's original intent, I think we can. But we can't without Him. Mm -hmm. And that was the missing piece. Trying to do things in our own intellect. As a man think, it, you know, I think this is right. Okay, let's go with it. You get a doctor involved in his intellect, eating from the tree of knowledge. And there can be tons of evidence to support it. And that's a problem, this evidence-based medicine. Mm -hmm. These are big, broad, population-wide summaries of here, we did this intervention, here's the average of what happened. So yeah, in general, that's a beneficial thing, but you, uniquely made, and your unique chemistry, and your unique microbiome, and your unique thinking, and your unique everything, is that the exact right fit for you? Or is that just kind of ballparking, and maybe you'll be one of the statistics that sort of got some better? Jeez. So evidence base has its place, the literature has its place, you can go get some ideas. But our great-great-grandparents were healthy, and there was no evidence-based anything directing them of how to do something. Yeah. There's this natural native inborn intelligence. There's the one that created the earth and all that's in it and created us. Mm -hmm. We have access to them. Once we understand that, believe that, walk in that, that's a whole new ball game. Yeah. And so those four pillars really, and that's the thing, you can get stuck on just nutrition, nutrition, nutrition. Yeah. Be careful there too, because that can become an idol that can become your savior. Yes. And there's, of course, we need to eat good food. And you can get a lot done with exercise and diet and hydration. But what we found over the years is you can be A++ on the three pillars, nutrition, hydration, and movement. But if you're P, if there's a lack of peace, true peace, not stress management, not fake peace, not happiness for sure, true contentment, True uh, being at ease instead of diseased. Um, that's the key. Absolutely, that's the key. And back to Roby Mitchell, my mentor up in Amarillo, who I said he's passed away. Um, and I told Roby this when he was alive. He was A++ and everyone knew it. <laughs> on nutrition, hydration, and movement. Mm -hmm. He was big on social media. Dr. Fit, F-I-T-T -T was his social media name. 
Facebook, he blew it up. He was a great marketer, yeah. sold a lot of products, and a great guy. I mean, it, from what I knew, just he helped me a ton. Um, but but his, he had no peace. And cancer overtook him. And at the end, he called me to try to help him because he was real smart. MD, PhD, brilliant guy. Mm. And he worked on himself to try to resolve that cancer. So at the end, he calls me. I go up there to Amarillo and um, I said, Roby, man, we need to get some other guys involved here. There's some really smart guys in Germany, in Mexico, in Japan that have protocols proven um, even late stage cancer. Um, let's go. You, you got the means. And he wouldn't. And, you know, where my part in that, I thought, man, I could at least help on the peace pillar and the spiritual side. So I tried to press on that a little bit with him. And he can, I mean, he admitted to that. Yeah, Ben, I know. It's off. And, but he just couldn't go there. He couldn't get, he really couldn't allow that thing to be. He tried to deal with that in a different way. Mushrooms and herbs and different things. Um, and at the end, it was it wasn't pretty. He was suffering because this cancer just he. I mean this, Roby in his prime. I mean he was muscled up, stout. Yeah, I've, I've met him in Amarillo. I think I saw him at the gym, and he was probably 50, 60, 55 or. His so. early sixties when he passed. Yeah. And I, he was just doing pull ups, making me look like a fool. It's unbelievable. Yeah, he put on like a hundred pound pack, get his yeah. fatigues, his army boots. He was a Marine or Army Ranger, I forget. He'd go jogging in the heat of Emerald. I mean, this guy would just, yeah. he nothing would pass by his lips that wasn't perfect. Mm. So in the, at the end, <clears throat> he asked me to um, speak at a conference. He had arranged this medical conference up in Amarillo. He'd called these doctors from around the country to fly in. He's putting on like a two day seminar. Roby was going to be a keynote, but he couldn't make it. He was down to like 80 pounds and couldn't get out of bed. And he asked me if I would speak on his behalf and be the keynote. But he said, I want you to speak on the spiritual connection wow. to disease. It was a powerful deal. I said, are you sure? And he said, yeah, the people need to know. Anyways, that like solidified it for me. Yeah. You can't get better than Roby Mitchell in supplements, nutrition, exercise, hydration. There's no... In like discipline only goes so far. Yep. Yeah. So when we miss out on the fact that we're a spirit being housed in the flesh mm -hmm. and we don't get that spiritual part and we don't get it accurately because there's lots of spirits, but there's one spirit. Yeah that's the truth, that will bring truth to you personally and tell you which way to go. Should you eat plants today? Should you eat meat today? Should you eat nothing today? Mm. Should you turn a lot of stuff off and fast from social media? Should you fast from food? Should you fast from, I don't know, whatever distractions in your life? I mean, it's these, these kind of things that we can seek and hear, I believe. And God knows what you need in the moment you need it. And he'll, he's eager to reveal it. Yeah. We just aren't trained to think like that or believe it or ask it. But honestly, it's so simple now. Eat real food. God food, not man food. Hydrate well. Make it water that's actually as close to natural water as possible. So water in nature has energy. Structured water, most people call it, has a charge. That's lightning. Rainwater has a charge from that lightning. Water in motion, going down a river through an aquifer, coming up through a spring, that has a, a structure to it or a, a charge to it. So we need mineralized water, structured water, sea salt in your water. And then move. We're not designed to sit all day. Get up every hour, even if you just stand up. 30 seconds. Within 90 seconds of you standing up, you engage. Your body automatically starts secreting chemicals, hormones that bring your insulin and your blood sugar down. Wow. Just from standing. Mm -hmm. And we sit eight hours in a chair all day. It mm -hmm. kills us. Sitting's a new smoke, and you probably heard. It's killer. And going to the gym at the end of the day doesn't make up for the eight hours of sitting all day. Yeah, so it really good. is the basics. Get up, move, hydrate, eat real food. But the most important, 
true peace, which I don't think you can have without knowing your creator yeah. and knowing who he says you are. Yes, yeah, so obviously, as you said, you can have those three pillars nailed down, but if you don't have peace, you really don't have any of them. So maybe give us an example of like, we know you eat well, I'm sure you hydrate well, get up and move, but um, what do you do to fill up that peace pillar? What does it look like for you during the day as a little reminders? Or do you have a routine of something you do every day? Mm. Or, is it, or is it just not, is it just God's always with you or? Yeah, I don't know if it's a routine. Okay. I tend to just naturally wake up a little early. So we have six kids, five still at home. So it can be a little loud and in a good way at our house. So early morning when it's just me up, um, that's a time I'm just quiet. And, you know, it can be different. It can be getting the word and read. It can be just listening, asking, talking. Um, so that's a pretty, you know, routine. It's not like quiet time, read my devotional, done, 10 minutes, okay, check. Yeah. I mean, that used to be. Right. Now I have a deeper understanding. It's a little different. Now it's a little more organic. So that's you know pretty easy for people in the morning it's early it's quiet no one's around not distracted you can just read and talk and listen and pray and um, it's I find more throughout the day that's where I'm trying to learn more and it's so easy to just turn something on and have something in your ear podcast um, which are, there's a time and place good but I've got to purposely watch it like driving that's a great time for me to listen and catch up on stuff yeah either medical or spiritual stuff Garden life, yeah. <laughs> but it's good to, to do a drive once or twice a week. I'm turning, I'm not turning anything on. Yeah. Like actually today I forgot my phone, drove all the way in it and drove home. And so it was quiet and it reminded me. Mm. It's good to just turn stuff off. Yeah. Um, even in at work, going outside. Um, and I mean, I don't do this like religiously. You know, if I miss this, oh no, freak out, no. Yeah. But if I can get outside, in sunshine, blue sky, green leaves, green grass, anything like that, that's beneficial. Nature is huge, huge. God designed us for that. <laughs> Where is the nature in Lubbock, Texas? Well, out in the courtyard. Where is the There's two grass? trees. Oh, yeah, it's out here. Where's the green grass? I mean, I'm... In fairness, where I work as well, there's a beautiful garden. But... <laughs> You've got to kind of put the nature into I'm West sure Texas. Green. I'm not sure about green. <laughs> it used to be a prairie, a sea of grass out here, but not anymore. Yeah. Um, but just learning to hear, just pause, even before patience. Mm -hmm. Like, all right, God, I know, even though I don't know that what this patient's coming in for, I know they need nutrition, hydration, movement, peace. I know right. they need new real food. I know they, I know everybody needs this baseline mm -hmm. stuff. But, you know, feel free to call an audible. I heard one guy say, you know, you show me what this one needs, mm -hmm. if there's something unique or different. Um, but personally, and really just more recently, this idea, I've interviewed Jamie Winship on an identity, a unique identity of God knew me before he put me in my mama's womb. He knit me together and he knew me in a unique way. Yeah. Like Ben, I'm making you on purpose right now to be in the earth. 1974 is when he put me into the womb. Um, I'm old, but... Like, this is purposeful. Mm -hmm. You need to be in the earth right now. I have something for you to do. Mm -hmm. Very good. But that doing is going to come out of your being. you got to know who I say you are. Yes. Yeah. And once you know who God says you are, you, all you got to do is be. Yeah. And when you just be, then things flow and peace can be there. Because otherwise we get false peace out of our doing. i got to be a certain thing, make so much money, look a certain way, care about what people think about me, whatever, you know, uh, to the world standard and if i meet the world standard then okay well i mean that's never true peace we all know that we're always right. chasing the next thing yeah. so got to kind of i've had to deal you know i used performance and man pleasing all this stuff I had to get rid of that false but that takes confession that takes just an honest uh talking with god and and that really looking back goes back 17 years we couldn't get pregnant uh, we got pregnant with our first kid right away. Got off birth control, which I don't recommend birth control now, but back then I didn't know. But we got pregnant first month. Mm -hmm. And then got back on birth control, and then we thought, time for our second baby. On our plan, our calendar, got off birth control and didn't get pregnant. 
in the second month, third month, six, nothing, 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 12 months, nothing. Mm -hmm. So this emotional roller coaster every month, yeah. Jamie's crashing and burning. I mean, me too, a little bit, but for sure her. And after 12 months, you're officially infertile by doctor's standards. So we went to the infertility doctor and another 12 months of that roller coaster. So we're two years into this thing and I was raised in church and religion. And I mean, I knew the word sort of some to a degree. And I was in the Bible. I was also raised under Darwin, Darwinian biology teaching, which that probably needs to be a whole nother episode to get yeah. into that. Oh. Um, but anyways, I went to the Word and I opened up Matthew 6.33, Seek ye first the kingdom. And in that moment, boom. I'd read that verse before many times. I've heard it preached before many times, but not like that day. Mm. And, it hit, and not even the second half of that verse, the, just that piece. Seek ye first the kingdom. And it just hit me. We're seeking a baby. Mm. We've been seeking a baby for 24 months more than anything else. Wow. And so I confess that. Immediately, I got Jamie. I said, look at that. We are way off base. If this, if this book's even true, this right. verse is true, yeah. then we're way off. So I literally said to God, God, I'm sorry, we are seeking the wrong thing. This says seek the kingdom, and we're not, so we're sorry. We're, we're truly sorry. We repent for that. But then my very next thing was, you know, I don't even know if you're there. <laughs> I'm talking to you right now. Right. I'm not even sure because you're invisible, and, you know, I don't know. I've never really experienced you that much. I mean, I got baptized when I was 11, but, so, I mean... That's honestly what I was thinking yeah. <laughs> in the moment. Yeah. But I confess that. That's the point. Be honest mm -hmm. and, and truthful. Yeah. And my very next thought was, I don't even know what the kingdom is. Mm -hmm. So I said that. I don't know what the kingdom is. This word, this verse right here says it. I don't know what that is. You're going to have to show me. And literally the very next confession was, I believe... But help me with my unbelief, because I remember that verse. That came, verse came to mind. There's a, a dad in the Bible who said that mm -hmm. to Jesus about healing his kid. Mm -hmm. um, and I just said, God, I don't, I mean, I have a lot of doubt and unbelief. So, I mean, I kind of believe you're there because I was raised to believe. And, and I do. It's not like I was totally unbelieving. Yeah. I believed, but a little. And I had a lot of unbelief. Mm -hmm. okay. But I confessed it. And it was all based in Darwin and evolution, all that stuff. How could Genesis be true and Darwin be true? And obviously Darwin's true because I've been taught that and all these smart doctors and professors and yeah. all this higher education I've been under, they're way smarter than I am and, you know, just all that. And it was like, boom. I don't remember exactly, but soon thereafter, these, these scientists start showing up in my life in different ways. PhD, double PhD, astrophysicist, crazy smart, University's smart level, um, proven, showing, proving Genesis. Wow. Academically, intellectually, where my intellectual mind could actually believe it. Mm -hmm. So then that thing could be submitted. You know, then I could, okay, intellectual mind, you're quiet enough now. Mm -hmm. I can hear from spirit. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that was three or four year journey to knock that intellectual thing down and get Darwin off the pedestal of idol worship and all that and you guys got pregnant shortly after you. right yeah right after that we get pregnant the next month we're pregnant Incredible. and then we had six kids total <laughs> <laughs> now we need to know how to no, not get no pregnant issues after that how do you shut this thing off guys? <laughs> <laughs> okay i believe i believe <laughs> i get your point you made your uh, Jamie says, did you miss that day in medical school that talks about reproduction and how yeah. to shut this thing up? <laughs> I love that verse. I feel like it's similar to our story because before I went to Bethel, um, I knew I was even going. I was just praying for a husband and I would kind of had, had focused on that for a very, very large chunk of my life. Um, and he said to me, he was like, keep your eyes fixed on me and I'll provide. Yeah. Just keep your eyes fixed on me and I'll provide. Yeah. So I just did. And it was like a year later that we met two weeks into school. And it was because my eyes were just so fixed on him and what he had for me. Yeah. So then I said yes to Bethel. Then I said yes to going, like, going there, meeting Blake, said yes yeah. to Marion. Like it all was just, 
yes to him each time. I know you have a better plan for me and for my life. And That is so key. I mean, because disease, symptoms, what more to take your eyes off Jesus than a, something's oh, hurting yeah. or a tumor right. or whatever it is. Yeah. That's the enemy's whole plan. Get our eyes off, and then he can put a question mark on who God even is, and yeah. then boom, he's got us. So, yeah, that's yeah, a great point. And I just encourage any listeners with disease or symptoms, tamp down those symptoms if you need to with whatever you need to do, but get your eyes back where they, yeah. to the truth. Yeah. And you know that's a whole other episode too, healing, because he bought, bought and paid for it. He's the healer. Yeah. yeah. Seek the healer, not the healing. I probably talk too much, so we're probably out no, of time. We could, we could talk all day, but hopefully we'll do some more. But it was yeah an absolute honor just to have you on and hear your wisdom and your experience of what you've gone through. It's pretty special. Well, thank y'all for having me. It's an honor to be here. Yeah, and to hear like I'm a legend and have wisdom. Or I think <laughs> I'm not that smart, <laughs> which I'm really not. Yeah. That's a beauty. You learn to man. I don't have to come up with anything. Yeah. I just have to believe, trust, listen, obey. There is something real quick just before we end of you just kept using the word like in those moments, you were just honest. Yeah. You were just honest with God. What is, I don't even know what the kingdom is. I don't even know if you can hear me like by honesty, confession of just here's where I am. Here's what's going on. Here's the mess because religion has taught us you have to be a certain way. You have to even speak faith not be honest with your emotions, not be honest if you're in pain. And it's just with a relationship with God, it's the complete opposite. If you can just be honest with where you are, God can meet you there. Yeah. Um, so just thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. Yeah, it's probably the number one take home message. Yeah. I mean, for the peace pillar to work for you, it mm. starts there. Yeah. Be honest wherever you're at, even if you don't believe in God, that's exactly. fine. Yeah. You know, just confess it, say yeah. it, talk, you know. He, he, he's eager, eager to come meet you mm-hmm. where you're at. So, Well, if you want to connect with Dr. Ben, you can follow on Instagram at Veritas Healthy Community. He has his own podcast called You're the Cure. This is how I explain to everybody the PhD version of this podcast. Ours is like entry level Amateur. into this idea and thought. And then if you go listen to You're the Cure... Um, you can really stuff. get the knowledge and wisdom <laughs> of how this actually works medically, scientifically. So go check that out. And you can actually become a member of Veritas wherever you are. You want to explain the website, how people can join and be a part? Yeah, veritaswellnessmember.com. We'd love for y'all go check it out. There's some stuff on there. You can just access some videos and the podcast and all that. Go learn on your own if you feel like you need a little more support or, or encouragement. You can sign up, $35 American dollars a month, and you'll get access to two live Zooms every week, library of resources, recipes, meal plans, all kinds of stuff. Uh, you can do one-on-one consults. There's group classes, all kinds of stuff. So VeritasWellnessMember.com. would love for you all to check it out. It's an amazing resource. Make sure you do go check it out. I love just your heart for even this website. Of He created this website, this online platform to educate to honestly teach people these truths and for the end goal to be that you don't even need a doctor, yeah, which is a whole new thought in this. <laughs> well, for anyone really, not any system or whatever, <laughs> just a new thought of you don't need a doctor. You just need some knowledge. So yeah, definitely go check that out. Dr. Ben, thank you. So You're welcome. You it's bet. a pleasure. Yeah, of course. See you next time, everyone. See you next week. Mm-hmm.